Poland is uh, mostly associated with the Second World War, isn't it? Yes, the great disaster um, drama of the 20th century, Second World War. So many people died. So many, Poland was in ruins after the Second World War. So you know about the concentration camps. I'm sure you do. And the biggest one, the most famous one, is Auschwitz, the concentration camp in Auschwitz. And the commandant, that's, that's a, probably the name, the commandant of that uh, uh, Auschwitz concentration camp was Rudolf Hess. Also famous man, but not famous because he did something good, but because he was so bad, so evil. And those who survived Auschwitz used to call him an animal. They wouldn't say he, is a, he was a bad man. He wasn't a bad man, he was an animal. And one day, uh, they took um, the whole community of Jesuit, fa Jesuit fathers from Krakow. They took all of the brothers and fathers to Auschwitz. Uh, only the superior was not at home at that very moment. Of, that wasn't kidnapping. You know, they simply, uh, I don't know the, the, the exact verb to express it, but it was uh, quite normal that they used to, you know, enter and take the people they wanted to Auschwitz for some reason. So they took the, the Jesuits, and when the superior was back, he, uh, he was so shocked and in such pain, and he said, I need to be with my brothers. So he, by himself, you know, without any pressure, it was his decision, he decided to go to Auschwitz to be with his brothers. But you cannot enter Auschwitz on your own because you want to, yeah? But he did it, you know, he found a hole, I don't know how he did it, but he entered the concentration camp searching for his, brother, for his brothers. And of course, guards found him and they took him to Rudolf Hess, to the commandant. Not even, you know, having these questions in their minds, oh, what will he do with him? Because they were totally convinced that he will simply kill him without any questions. And how big was their surprise when he let him go? Simple like that. Go back home from the concentration camp. It's, it doesn't happen ever, ever, never, ever. So he left, and then Second World War was ended in some years. Rudolf Hess was, um, he received the punishment, death punishment, yes. They said that you are guilty for the crime on humanity, I guess this is the name. So the, that's the greatest crime any man can do. And you will be hanged in Auschwitz in the place where you used to kill people. But before this, uh, the sentence uh, was carried out, he was uh, to wait for the sentence in the prison in Wadowice. By the way, this is the city where John Paul was born. Uh, so he, was, he knew he's going to the prison in Wadowice, and he was in such great fear he was afraid of the prison. He wasn't afraid of the death in Auschwitz. He was afraid of the time in prison because he was totally convinced that Polish guards will take revenge on him and he will be tortured for all these days as long as he's in the prison. It will be unimaginable pain for him day by day, minute by minute. This was his idea of the time in prison awaiting for 
death. And how great was his surprise when suddenly the Polish guards, men whose wives, daughters, sons were killed in Auschwitz, they treated him well. And he couldn't understand. And that was the moment of his conversion because they treated him well. Mercy, that's the love that we know we do not deserve. He knew he doesn't deserve their forgiveness, their goodness, their gentleness, their help. And he received all that. So then he asked for a priest. He wanted to confess his sins before he dies. Please understand, it happens straight after the Second World War. Wounds are very fresh. So the guards said, okay, we will find you a priest. But it wasn't easy to find a priest who would like to listen to the confession of Rudolf Hess. So they couldn't find one. And then Rudolf Hess remembered the name of the Jesuit priest whom he let go a few years before. And so he gave them the name saying, please try to find this man. Maybe he will come. And so they found him in the shrine of divine mercy in Krakow where we are stationed. He was our chaplain at that time. And so he went. He said, okay, I will go. And he listened to his confession. It lasted and lasted and lasted. And then he gave him absolution. Your sins are forgiven. Rudolf Hess, you animal, your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. The next day, Father Lon came to, he, to the prison again, but not alone. He's never alone, of course, but this time he came like in real, real presence of God. He brought Jesus, he brought Holy Communion to Rudolf Hess. And the guard who was present uh, in the very room with Rudolf Hess and the priest said it was one of the most beautiful moments in his life, seeing the, this animal yes, kneeling uh, with tears in his eyes, looking like a little boy, and receiving Holy commun Communion, receiving Jesus to his heart. Unimaginable mercy. Rudolf has, before he died, um, he wrote a letter, an open letter. He wanted to be published after his death uh, in Polish newspapers. And in that letter he said, I know what I did. I know how great is my sin and my guilt. But God forgave me. And now I ask you, the Polish nation, the Polish people, to forgive me as well. I hope you can do it.